When strangers are coming, they come to your house, they kill you all and say, we're not guilty. Ukraine's Jamala will sing 1944 at Eurovision 2016, and she tackles the very serious topic of the forced deportation of Crimean Tartars under Stalin. This, of course, is a very personal story for her, as her grandmother was one of these people deported, and she lost her daughter. You guys, this song has been discussed by everyone from the New York Times to Der Spiegel to Billboard. People said it too political, and then Jamala said, no, this isn't political, this is personal. I tend to agree with her. This is a historical song with a lovely message about the realities of the world. Musically, I think this is on point. When she screams at the end of the song, she is screaming for all those victims and it is touching. Chris, what do you think? I really like it. I've always liked Jamala as an artist. I thought she was really, she used to be like very fun and happy and you know, it's me, Jamala. Um, and now she's kind of taken this different role of being this quite epic storyteller. Um, I would also tend to agree that it is a very personal song. The um, Crimean Tatar sort of chorus, the, the lyrics there come from a traditional song in that language. I can completely understand how this could be considered inflammatory to certain members of the Eurovision community, the people who are involved, but I do think just based on the very merits of the song alone and Jamala as an artist, it is quite difficult to find a flaw with this song. I think that musically it's very experimental, very inventive. The breaking beat sound is so original for Eurovision and her voice carries it beautifully. It's difficult to place this in a genre. Yes, there are breaking beats, but it's also, to me, a little funky and jazzy and soulful. You cannot define this and that's one of its qualities. I think with lesser singers, it would come off as a joke, but when delivered by Jamala, who has this gravitas and this personal connection, it's very, very powerful and very stirring. Um, I'm not one to get too too worked up emotionally about Eurovision songs, but this, there's something in this that's very, very powerful, and she just delivers it so well. Uh, we should also add that outside of this song, she is a happy person. Mm. If you go on her oh, Instagram, yeah. it's all fashion. And a no, dog. She, uh, she loves Gucci. Is her dog Gucci, I think? I think, think so, Oh yeah. no, sorry, she's Badu. Badu is her dog. It's just fantastic. She's, she's like a complete person. She has many different sides, many different facets, and I really respect that. Staging? This will be amazing. They will strike the somber tone, and yet they will make it accessible to all of Europe. I think that Ukraine does staging perhaps better than anyone. They oh. always get it right. It's always daring and dramatic, and when it needs to be, dark. And I think she'll pull it off. And what I applaud Jamala for is um, understanding the importance of the Eurovision Song Contest, which reaches out to over 170 million people at its minimum at its minimal viewpoint. So it's, I think some, sometimes we say it goes up to 220 million people. And to recount this tale and put it in the narrative in the context of 1944 as a title actually makes me want to do some research. And I think Eurovision should kind of do that. It's not just about light entertainment. It's also, it should be educational. And she, she takes that box for me where I kind of now want to go and um, discuss and engage with this particular subject. The other thing to point out is political story, personal story. The fact is, it is not fiction. This stuff happened in Crimea and it happened in 1944. So why shouldn't you know about it? Why can't it be discussed? If it upsets Russia, well, too bad. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. It, you know, this mm. is, this is, whichever way we look at it, she's not making things up. This is, this is reality. And I think Europe should be, we should all be connected. Issues that happen in Crimea should affect all of us. But also it's not even anti-Russian. We have a Russian blogger, Misha, who has pointed out that under Stalin, people all over the former, you know, USSR were deported and there was forced migration. It's a shared history. So it's not anti-Russian. It's anti this time period, you know, the actions of a specific leader. And I think Russians understand that. I think, you know, 
our own Russian bloggers understand that there's no drama there. It was the outside world, you know, many Western journalists creating the drama. They wanted it to become a story about something that it actually really wasn't about, so... And the EBU is sensitive to that. So they felt yeah. that this was pointing fingers at, you know, the current regime. I'm sure they would have taken action. I but... mean, we had that last year. They, I mean, they didn't force Armenia to change the title from Don't Deny to Face the Shadow. But I think it was certainly hinted, well, it might be a good idea if you do that. But they cleared 1944 completely. Yeah. You know, it Angus. appeals to me, it's very like a high culture revolution of the Ukrainian diva. Because, I mean, we've seen Ooh. probably since like, even like 2008 with Annie Laura, kind of that sign, like Ukraine specialised in sending strong women to the contest. I mean, like, Rusalana. Alyosha, Alyosha. Alyosha was about the environment. And I think this is just kind of a personal evolution of that. Uh, I don't know if it's particularly my style. I find the song itself quite heavy and it's quite a deep message, like... It's very resonant and an important one to communicate. I'm not sure the style is to me, but I think that's more Jamala's voice than the actual story of the song. Uh, but I think it's a strong one and it's a powerful thing to put across. And it's something, like, it shows the full spectrum of Ukrainian talents. Like, Ooh. you can have a Maria Yaramchuk doing TikTok that's kind of uh, more towards the disposable Michael Jackson fun pop. And then you can have, like, it's from, like, Michael Jackson fun to Michael Jackson Earth song. Like, mm. there's a very powerful <laughs> a good way of putting vibe it. going on. You guys, we've discussed the history, the politics, the personal story, but let's go around and give our scores out of 10 and also talk about the music if you have not yet done so. I am going to give Jamala an 8.5 for 1944. I think that it is a very good, genuine entry. I am so happy that the Ukraine are back. Um, I don't think it's a winner. I think it has the potential to take Ukraine's natural place in the top five. And yeah, it's a very good personal story. My only concern would be if Jamala does start to feel that very personal bond and it, it becomes quite a bit too emotional on the night, whether or not she'll be able to hold it all together, we might see a little bit too much screeching. I think she will hold it together, but there is that possibility that she'll just edge a little bit too far for a normal Eurovision viewer to appreciate. What I love about this song is whether you like it or not, when it comes on, you kind of stop yeah. and listen because it's so arresting. Mm. It grabs you because it is so different from anything we've heard, not just at Eurovision, but for me in my normal music life. I don't hear music like this very often and I quite like it. And you know what? I'd love her to get very emotional. I think that would just add even more fuel to this emotional cauldron. It is already smoldering. Set the Globin on fire, Jamala. My score, oh yes, is a nine. Yes, that is very close to 10. It is a nine. I think it's well-deserved. I think Ukraine deserves a spot in the top five, not just for the story, but also for Jamala as a performer, as a musician, a composer. This ticks all the boxes for me. I really enjoyed your interview with Jamala because it really showed a different side to her. And it's kind of refreshing to know that an artist can hold, you know, can arrest you on stage with a very serious and important message. And at the same time, kind of engage with you in a lighter way. And I think that's really important where you're just not sort of, you know, heavy set 24 seven. Mm. And, and, and Jamala does tick that box. However, th this really is, touches me in a very different way. It doesn't take me to the dance floor. It doesn't, it, it just makes me think. And my engagement with Eurovision is kind of a reality suspense. So this doesn't rank too high for me. I'm giving it a 5.5. With a caveat, this needs to be in the final. It really needs to be in the final. This is a message and this is a part of history that we all need to kind of engage with. I'm gonna be straight up. It's a six out of 10 for me. I recognize the importance of the message. I think vocally the delivery is quite strong. A lot of these women with these great vocal ranges at Eurovision, it can turn quite shrill and screamy. And I think at the moment, Jamala holds the right side of that before it becomes unbearable. But yeah, the song is just, there are other songs I prefer more, but equally, this message deserves a platform. That's what we think. What do you think? Is 1944 doing it for you in 2016? You can let us know here on Weebly Blogs. And if you want to know how our jury average was... Oh song, my gosh, I always forget to do that, y'all! We did want to say, but... <laughs> The average score across all 40 wee wee bloggers all over the world, from Australia to the UK to America to Russia, is 7.88.
That is a massive mm, score. That's very good. Cool. And for a particularly for a potentially divisive song, that is a very high score as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that is what we think. What do you think? Let us know on Weebly Blogs. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And make sure to subscribe down below. I would really, actually, we would really love to read your comments on this. So please pour it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you later. Bye. Bye.